Do you want to work for an international consulting, banking, or law firms? Do you want to be the one who travels around the world and helps solve challenging problems for Fortune 500 companies? Do you know what is the most common type of people that these prestigious international companies would hire? It is insecure overachiever. The good news is that insecure overachievers are made, not born. So in today's video, I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide of how to become a insecure overachiever to help you unlock, land, and excel a job in consulting, banking, or law firms. Hello, 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 this is Angie. So in this video, I'll both explain why these companies are so obsessed with insecure overachievers, what is one of the most popular types, and I will tell you how to become one step by step. You would notice in the phrase insecure overachiever, it's actually made of two words. So let's break it down one by one. Let's talk about the overachieving part first. What does overachieving mean? It is very straightforward. It means goes above and beyond, deliver exceptional performance, and make sure everybody around you is happy. Of course, who wouldn't want an overachiever? It's every employer's favorite. So part one is, how can you overachieve? You need to selfless. You need to fully recognize that you are not, you are not, not the most important part of your life. You are not, but your client is. So your life, your work, everything should be centered around your clients, their needs, their wants, their everything. And then you need to anticipate. What that means is you not only need to understand the needs that they have expressed to you explicitly, you also have to anticipate the ones that they haven't even realized or figured out that is deep underneath the client needs iceberg. So you will know ahead of time and help bring that to their realization and really surprise them with your outstanding performance. And then you need to also work hard. Of course, working hard and working long hours tied to overachieving. I mean, how can you really overachieve if you just work a normal 40 hour schedule? Right? And also remember, time is limited. Everyone only have 24 hours in a day. So if you have the same amount of time as, as everyone else, then how do you overachieve? It means that you work extra hard, work more hours, work longer hours. And the good tip here is multitasking. If you can multitask, I mean, multi two or three tasks at the same time, that effectively means you have twice or three times amount of time than everyone else. So instead of having 24 hours in a day, you could have up to 48 hours or 96 hours. Did I do my math right? 72 hours while not working while eating. You only really need your mouth to chew, but you can still use your hands, use your eyes, use your brain to think and solve problems and continuously making models. Why not sleep? I'm thinking. Didn't some great men say that their greatest inspiration always come from their dreams? So while the rest of your body probably need to take, you know, a biological break, your brain could still keep working throughout the night. Why not? And oh, let's not forget to have a little notebook next to your nightstand so you can always remember to write down your greatest thoughts. And speaking of long hours, you can also probably think about reducing the amount of time that you need to sleep. There are so many people, great businessmen that said they only have to sleep four or five hours a day. So if they can do that, why wouldn't you? But is overachieving by itself enough? Of course not. Let's not forget about the insecure part. The insecure part is also as important, if not more important. The insecure part is also the reason why those people are the ideal candidate. Think about it. If you're a partner at those companies, what is the best way to keep your overachieving team push harder and work harder? You need to create the sense of insecurity. When they're insecure, it is so much easier to play this stick and carrot game. And because they're insecure, they obviously would always work harder, push themselves harder, and create a culture and continuously attract other insecure people around them. And so now, part two is, how can you be insecure? First, you need to be humble. Humble is a great virtue. It means that you should never be full of self, even though I know deep down it feels good, to be validated for accomplishment, but do not be full of yourself. And the way to do that is to discount your accomplishments. 
I mean, they're just sugar coating at the end of the day. People are just too nice here. They won't really tell you if you're being terrible. They're just being polite, right? They're just sugar coating. It is a rather dangerous slope once you are just emerged in your accomplishments and praises from everyone. It makes you content and it makes you lost. You have to think about deep down, do you really, really, really deserve the recognitions and the praises that people give you? Or are they just simply being nice and want you to fall behind? Which then takes us to the next point, improving. Even when receive praises, always think, is there anything else I can do? Is there anything else that I can improve? Because you know that you're not by any means perfect, but you can work harder to get there and you need to strive for perfection. You constantly need a higher bar in order to catch up to others. Always, always, always double down on your weaknesses and your failures because those are the real learning moments. And if you don't improve your weakness, how can you be perfect? Next, up or out. Even though a lot of those companies don't mention it, but it's very deeply understood. Think about it. There are only a handful of partners at those companies, but there's a bunch of consultants or, or low level lawyers or bankers on the bottom. Then what do the people do who cannot make it? They leave. Do you want to leave or do you want to be a winner? You want to be a winner, right? The up or out game is never ending. There are always higher people who are younger, hungrier, more insecure than you. So remember to always keep it up. How do I know so much about being an insecure overachiever? Because for as long as I can remember, I have been one, felt like throughout my entire life. I was never sure whether what I've done is enough. I was never sure how people would perceive me. People's validation means everything to me. I need constant validation from others to feel that I'm worthy. But then every time when I receive compliments from other people for my accomplishments, for everything that I've done, my first instinct is to say, no, 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 this is nothing. I'm pretty sure I can do better. And in the back of my mind, I'm also thinking that please stop giving me the spotlight. I'm not perfect. There is so much I can do. There is so much I can learn. I'm just never good enough. And every time when I couldn't achieve the objective that I've set for myself, I become extremely hard on myself. Why couldn't you just do it like everyone else? To be honest, I really hate this. I know that probably 80 or 90% of the unhappiness, the stress comes from being an insecure overachiever and I really want to change. And as a first step to this, I'm gonna start giving compliments to myself every day for the little progress that I've achieved and focused only on me. And if you are an insecure overachiever like me, start giving yourself daily praise that you deserve. And share in the comments to inspire yourself, me, and many others. Until next time, bye.